Bolshevik Lives Matter More In the early 20th century, millions of Russian, Ukrainian, and Eastern European Christian men, women, and children were murdered by Bolshevik revolutionaries. This historical fact was common knowledge in Europe, the United States, and elsewhere in the lead-up to World War II, as articulated, for example, by the famous Catholic priest and broadcaster, Father Charles Coughlin. But every intelligent American Christian whose heart bleeds for his 20 million fellow Christians who were butchered by the Trotskys and Belagoons, the Bronsteins and the Cohens in Soviet Russia, in the Ukraine, in Hungary and elsewhere, they appeal to the Jews of America to join with them in removing communism, the cause of Nazism. This was prior to his being censored and removed by American broadcasters, much as he would be today by the likes of Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube. Placing the continuing destruction of America in the historical context of communist revolution and democide on this edition of the Memory Hole Blog Report. Welcome to MHB Report, this is James Tracy. The United States has careened dangerously toward a civil war, perhaps even a communist revolution, in just the past six months. The economy has been decimated while marauding renta mobs run loose in major American cities under the guise of civil rights demonstrations. Would historically challenged U.S. citizens recognize any potential designs behind the pandemic and such organized civil unrest? Along these lines, why is it that we know far more about the crimes of Nazism, which span all of 12 years, than those of communist revolutionary movements, which have been a recurring historical phenomenon since at least 1848, and perhaps as early as 1789. Communism and the forces behind the ideology have been the root cause of wide-scale destruction, displacement, famine, and the deaths of now over 100 million innocent civilians, providing the context out of which Nazism arose. Antifa and Black Lives Matter have become household names over the past several months because major media outlets have promoted them as organizations allegedly motivated by civil rights concerns. As self-avowed Marxists, the beliefs and violent behavior characterizing these radical groups stand opposed to the values held by an overwhelming majority of Americans. Even so, such radicalism is upheld by corporate America, major sports franchises, and one of the two major U.S. political parties. With this in mind, communists have historically risen to power by tapping into and mobilizing the grievances of minority groups against the majority population of a nation. In short, a successful race war involves a targeted demographic to accuse and rally the aggrieved against. For the BLM Marxists, Antifa organizers, and their wealthy sponsors, singular instances of police brutality are amplified by sympathetic media and presented as prima facie evidence of oppressive white supremacy and patriarchy. Raising the revolutionary ante several levels, the charge extends to the religious practices of the majority, whose places of worship are now the targets of left-wing terror. The targeting of the predominantly Christian majority is especially chilling in light of the French and Russian revolutions, in which Christian churches were desecrated, sacramental treasures plundered, and eventually the clergy and laity themselves were subjected to Jacobin and communist bloodlust. The Russian Revolution was carried out almost exclusively by Russian and Polish Jews, who used the long-simmering resentment of an isolated minority who, because of their religious and ethnic heritage, suffered many decades of persecution and displacement under Christian czarist rule. 
Following the 1917 revolution, thousands of poor and uneducated Jews were recruited by primarily Jewish Soviet councils into the Cheka, or the Communist Secret Police Death Squads, where they meted out revenge against their would-be white Christian oppressors without restraint. A program of wanton bloodletting and displacement was waged for several years against millions of middle-class Christian Russians, those who sprang from the era characterized by the intellectual and literary accomplishments of Tolstoy and Chekhov. The slaughter of Christians was unparalleled in modern history. Entire families, beginning with that of Tsar Nicholas's, were tortured and bludgeoned with satanic-like abandon. Disembowelment, dismemberment, and living entombment were among the forms of macabre torture enacted by the Cheka, preceding summary execution. Is it any wonder that today's BLM and Antifa communists are eager to defund police departments so that perhaps similar death squads might be organized against middle-class white American Christians? In the first years of Bolshevik rule, churches were looted, desecrated, and destroyed in an attempt to discourage and destroy Russian Christian orthodoxy. The Christian clergy themselves were eventually murdered. Research compiled in one of the few scholarly efforts to chronicle this Christian holocaust, the Black Book of Communism, reveals how the first years of Russian communist rule political executions increased exponentially in contrast to just several hundred during the previous century of Tsarist rule. In the prevailing view of European history, Adolf Hitler and Benito Mussolini rose to power because of some inherent character defect of the German and Italian people, hence the heroic cause of resistance groups such as Antifa. In fact, a primary factor in Hitler, Mussolini, and Spain's Francisco Franco's broad popular appeal were the profuse and indisputable reports of communist brutality and atrocities targeting Russian and East European Christians throughout the late 1910s and 1920s. Much like the impulse developing in America today against the BLM and Antifa-led Red Terror masquerading as social protest, Bolshevik Russia's post-war efforts to export communist revolution throughout Eastern Europe caused a right-wing nationalist reaction led by veteran military officers and militias that suppressed many communist insurrections, most of which were directed from within the Soviet Union itself. The basis for similar urban warfare is now taking shape in the U.S as armed Black Lives Matter and Antifa revolutionaries are confronted by federal law enforcement and American nationalist militants. Given the Democratic Party's militant, no-holds-barred approach to seizing control of the White House and both congressional chambers, the extent of what transpires in major cities between now and November 3rd will likely be cataclysmic. It's anyone's guess what the country will look like in the election aftermath perhaps a balkanization of regions and states along partisan political lines, even full-blown civil war. Mark Twain once remarked, history doesn't repeat itself, but it often rhymes. With communism's crimes eclipsed by those of Nazi Germany in our educational institutions and popular memory and discourse, it's close to impossible to discern such historical harbingers. If you like what we're doing in these videos, please consider becoming a patron of MHB at Patreon slash Memory Hole. For MemoryHoleBlog.org, this is James Tracy.